Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, let's get down to it. Hour number two of the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas, streaming on the Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download it now or you're going to get a really bad case of foot fungus. I'm serious. But now get that app. We'd certainly appreciate that. And, of course, we also are streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and X. Just go to the Mark Hoke Show on YouTube. And uh, also on Facebook, and then X is at Mark Hoke Show. And you can join in, chat with us, say hi, give us your thoughts, ask us your questions. We would certainly welcome all that as we talk about everything happening in pro wrestling from around the world. It has been an unbelievable week, and we are getting ready for SummerSlam on Saturday. Should be a wild, wild day in Cleveland. I know those words don't usually go together. But that's okay. We're going to have some fun in Cleveland. But to talk about that, plus all the incredible happenings in AEW and from around the wrestling world, one of my favorite guys, I tell you what, this man is one of the best writers and and does amazing summaries of everything going on in pro wrestling. Let's get him on here right now. Chris Doc Mueller from Bleacher Report. Doc, what's up? Hey, Mark, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Good to talk to you again, my friend. How you been? Oh, uh, you know, hanging in there, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't want to <laughs> bring the mood down, but no, I'm kidding. Um, everything's <laughs> been great. Fantastic. And, of course, it, it was funny because I'm getting ready for the show today, and I'm just going through the summaries that uh, you guys do on Bleacher Report, and I'm like, oh, I'm reading Doc's stuff. This is great. I love it. <laughs> that always makes me laugh, and especially when you're coming on the show and I'm reading what you said already. So I generally know the answer to some of the questions. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun. It's fun. So you guys make sure you check out Bleacher Report. Like I said, if, if you happen to miss a TV show or something like that, Doc summaries of these shows are outstanding, and I agree with him about 95% of the time. So terrific, terrific work he does. Thankfully, I don't have to do every show. We do have a couple other guys, Eric and Kevin, who cover some of the shows, but I probably do like 50% of what's on every week at least. Yeah, and and Eric does a great job too. I, I Yeah, I've got, I've got to get Eric and Kevin. We should have all three of you on the same time sometime. That'd be fun. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll have to work that out. Well, SummerSlam's coming up. I want to start there before we dive into all this crazy happenings with AEW. And I'm going to hit you with the question that I've been teasing from the last hour. What is the main event of SummerSlam? If you were putting on this card and picking the last match, what would it be? Hmm. Yeah, see? Isn't that fun? Because this should be an easy question, and it's not. So, in my opinion, when it comes to the bigger pay-per-views like this, I think the main event has to be one of the world titles, either men's or women's right now. The matches that we have for those titles are Damian and Gunther, Bailey and Nia live and Rhea and Cody and solo. I'm assuming based on WWE's love of the bloodline story, it's going to be Cody and solo. If I was booking the show, it would be Damien and Gunther. Oh, wow. Okay. I think Damien and Gunther is going to be just such a a hard-hitting, great match. And Cody and Solo will be too, but it's going to be the same thing we're always used to. It's going to be a bunch of interference, and, and you know, it'll, it'll be a repeat of something we've seen 20 times, I'm sure. Damien and Gunther is a fresh match, and... Gunther is getting a lot of heat with this heel run he's on right now. 
and Damien is really coming into his own as the champion, I think. I think the last couple of weeks have been stronger for him than after he initially won the title. So, yeah, I would put that match at the end, but it'll likely be Cody and Solo. But, you know, knowing WWE, every once in a while they put a non-title match in the main event, and with Punk and Drew being the hottest story in WWE right now, that's like a, a third option that could potentially be there. See, I don't, that, you know, depending on what they have planned for maybe, you know, the, the Cody uh, solo match, I would go with Punk and McIntyre at the end. I just think that that match is so hot right now that people are going to be going crazy. And, and I don't know. I mean, where would you put that on the card? You know, that's the tricky part. You, are you, it doesn't seem like that would be, you know, you could kick off the card with that, but that with all the other world championship matches, it seems like that's a little out of place. So I don't even, I don't even know where you would, where it would truly fit except at the end. Like lining up a pay-per-view card is one of those things that I'm never envious of the promoters who have to do it because it is a difficult thing to do. Like when you have four world title matches, you need to space them out, but you also don't want to make any of them feel less important than the others, right? So, yeah, I don't know. With 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 Punk and Drew, I feel like maybe maybe the second match on the card would be a good spot for them. Like, open it up with Liv and Rhea, which is also like kind of a hot feud right now. And Liv and Rio will get the crowd going, and then Punk and Drew will take them to the next level. Yeah, this is going to be the, just the match order is intriguing enough on this card, much less anything else that, that's going to be happening. And then you know, we had a question in the chat box too: Does Roman finally come back at SummerSlam? Do you think that this is the time? I think it could be, but it all depends on how many other like quote-unquote surprises WWE is going to throw on the show. I feel like it's a lock for Survivor Series to have, you know, OG Bloodline versus New Bloodline or, you know, OG Bloodline plus Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens or whatever weird conglomeration of people they want to put together for that side. But I I do think a, a, a Survivor Series elimination match is probably in their future, and bringing Roman back now gives them plenty of time to build up for that. So I do think it would be a really good place for them to bring Roman in. And I'm curious to get your thoughts about with Roman and The Rock looming out there. Do you feel like that that's hurt, Cody? We've been talking about it a little bit. Has has it kind of pushed Cody's title reign down just a little bit? knowing that Roman is sitting out there and this whole bloodline thing is going to explode. And then the rocks hanging around out there too. And people are probably thinking, well, you know, rock and Roman should face off at WrestleMania. Where does that leave Cody? And, but you know, the rock had teased he was going to take on Cody and that apparently had been the plan is, is all this starting to really hurt Cody Rhodes? I don't think it's starting to hurt Cody in terms of like, his character or popularity or anything. But I definitely think that his title reign has been too much about the bloodline. Like I want to see Cody feud with other people. And like, we know we're going to get a Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton match eventually. Yeah. And they have, they have to. And I mean, how many times has Randy turned on somebody and turned heel, you know, like yeah. it's, it's his thing. Like him and Big Show, they're the two guys that keep turning. Um, So I I think what Cody needs more than anything is maybe a little bit of time away from the bloodline. And Roman coming back could give that to him because then it would be Roman and Solo feuding for the tribal chief title. And then you pit Cody against Orton or maybe even The Rock. Who knows? But... If we're doing Rock and Roman at WrestleMania, I honestly don't think the title should be involved or needs to be involved. Yeah, I would agree. I, 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 I think that should be all about pride and like family and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see that 
that Rhodes Orton match. If you if you drag that out, and I don't know, you know, how long they can hold Randy off from attacking Cody and you know getting this feud rolling, but if you had that on the card along with Rock Roman, and you know, say you know Punk was wrestling for the World Championship, like if you had Punk Gunther or something like that, you know, you're off to a pretty good start right there for WrestleMania here in Las Vegas. So, you know, plenty of plenty of possibilities, but. Man, I, I think that would be fun to have Cody and Orton at WrestleMania. I mean, it would be a, a, a marquee match for sure, because the last time they had a match together, they were in very different places in their career. And now that Cody is this top guy and Orton is sort of this elder statesman of WWE, like he's kind of the resident veteran now. Very few people there have been around as long as Orton. So... I think it's a much more intriguing combination now than it was whatever 10 years ago or whenever they feuded originally. Yeah. Uh, what else are you looking forward to on this card? Uh, you know, we have a uh, Damien priest and Gunther. You mentioned that, uh, Bailey, Nia Jax, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Cody and solo, uh, Logan Paul, Ellie Knight, which I think is a big match for Ellie Knight, uh, Sami Zayn, Braun breaker, and then the punk McIntyre match. What, what's got you excited about this one? Um, I'm really looking forward to Liv and Rhea. I think that, I think they, and even though I'm not a Dominic fan, Dominic has been helping, but like that story has been great. And I'm really looking forward to the match to see exactly what happens. Cause this is one that I'm genuinely up in the air about what I want to happen. Like, I don't think they should take the title off Liv yet. I think it would devalue her her reign as champion if Rhea just comes back and takes the title right away. But at the same time, Rhea is as red hot as anybody in the company and having her win that title again would be a great moment. So it's really tough to say, but I'm looking forward to that. And Bron and Sammy are, are going to go nuts on each other. They're going to try to outdo their last match. And I think it's going to be phenomenal. Is Bron walking out of there with the intercontinental title? Oh, yeah, this time he definitely is. I kind of thought it was happening last time, but once Sammy won, I was like, you know what? The guy who beat Gunther shouldn't be able to be beaten easily. So I'm glad he got one win, but you know they want Breaker with that title. You can tell that Breaker is like a pet project for management, and beating a guy like Sammy Zayn at a big pay-per-view for the IC title is a really great way to get Braun like, pushed up a level. And, of course, we're on the Mark Hoke Show here with Bleacher Reports. Chris Doc Mueller, very happy to have him back on the show. We missed him terribly because he's awesome. Um, the <laughs> so you're supposed to say, yeah, I am. Come on, Doc. Let's go. Uh, I'm I'm a very self-deprecating person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to build you up here. Uh, the I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. The... Uh, and now you mentioned the Priest Gunther match, and I know a lot of people have been kind of not that excited about this match, but you seem pretty pretty high on this one. You know, tell us why. Well, I mean, set the build aside and look at the competitors we're dealing with. You have Damian Priest, who's one of the most versatile big men to come along in years. Like, I think people underestimate how much that guy is capable of because he holds back sometimes. And then he pulls out all the cool tricks during the big matches. And then you have Gunther, who is like one of the most badass men on the planet and easily one of my top three WWE people right now, like across the board. They are going to beat the crap out of each other. Like it's going to be bloody chests like we saw with Jericho and Suzuki on Dynamite. It's going to be nuts. And I, I think that out of all the matches on the card, this one and Sammy and Braun are going to be the two most physical. Like, they're going to really beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, it should be fun. And then, you know, the question is, who walks out of that priest Gunther match with the title? Because you have so many other moving pieces around with Punk, McIntyre, Rollins, and whoever else they want to throw into this thing too, it is—it's a pretty tricky situation in terms of booking 
where they want to take all this with, you know, really even, you know, there's, there's more people out there, but those five guys are all sitting right there in that world championship picture. And, you know, if let's say priest loses and it's Finn Balor that screws him over, you know, Balor would maybe get back in the picture too. This is a, this is a very going to be very, shall we say entertaining to see what they decide to do at SummerSlam with this match. Yeah. As much as I like priest and I think his, his reign is getting better because it didn't start super strong. Um, I do think Gunther is probably leaving with the title and based on the little seeds they've been planting, I could totally see it being Finn who costs him the title. Because it does seem like Judgment Day is, they have an expiration date and it's approaching. Um, And, you know, Finn Damien is the big feud that's going to come out of that, I think. Yeah, I have a feeling uh, Mommy might be beating up uh, Poppy here pretty soon, too. Just a hunch. Oh, you don't even understand (laughs) how excited I'm going to be when she decks Dom in the face. (laughs) They should have a match. That would be fun. I mean, could you imagine that? Do, it, WWE is so like iffy with the intergender stuff, right? So, like, what what what's the one intergender match we've had in the last like ten fifteen years? It was a twenty four seven title match with Akira Tozawa, right? Like, yeah, that's not something WWE cares for. But when you're talking about Rhea, she is just strong and dominant and big enough to beat up a lot of the guys on the roster and dom's not a big dude like she believably could and would kick the crap out of that guy (laughs) um so yeah like i i would be all for it and it would obviously have to end with Rhea just destroying him that would be unbelievable that that and that would be one i could swallow I, I could handle that. I remember back when the Jeff Jarrett China thing was going on and I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about this one, but that, that matchup, I, I'd be okay with it. I think I'd be all right with it. I think a lot of people would too. I think Dom would be getting booed out of the building. It would be hilarious, but ugh, Dominic, poor Dominic. I just, I said last week he needs to run and hide. And I think that's still my advice to him. Run and hide. <laughs> so We'll see. I just need him to cut off that stupid mullet. <laughs> like, it, it be, I, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not Eddie Guerrero. You cannot. It's not the nineties anymore. And we as a society have failed because we have let the mullet come back into stuff. <laughs> there are way too many men running around with mullets again. And as, as somebody who was a, a kid in the late eighties and early nineties who actually did have a mullet, I did. <laughs> I'm so those, sorry. All those pictures should be burned, but I, I loved it at the time. Um, yeah, I want to see it die a horrible death and never come back. Well, maybe she can uh, do a something versus hair and uh, take care of that. That'd be you know right. what? Hangman Page is allowed to keep the mullet. Everybody else has to get rid of it. <laughs> that you... that's the thing. Hangman Hangman somehow looks okay with a mullet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It does it's a cowboy thing? I guess so. Good for him. All right. Well, we've got to take a break, Doc. And when we come back, we're going to talk about one wild week in AEW, including all this TV stuff and Death Before Dishonor and what's going on with ROH. I mean, just amazing things happened this week on AEW TV. So we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more with Bleacher Reports. Chris, Doc Mueller. So stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. 1015 FM K Don. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, let's bring it back for another round. I'm thirsty. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on the Mark Hoke Show on K Don 1015 FM, the talk of Las Vegas, the Odyssey app, and of course, streaming on YouTube, Facebook, X. Is you know we're just amazing like that, and we were joined by Bleacher Reports 
Chris Doc Mueller, very happy to have him back on the show. One of my favorite writers on the entire planet. Thrilled to have him on the air. Doc, so let's get into what's going on in AEW. And I wanted to start with the Ring of Honor uh, situation. And you gave that Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view an A-. minus. You loved it. I, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I, I really had a great time with that show. In fact, I've come to the conclusion that that's my favorite ROH pay-per-view since Tony took over. Wow, that's some that's some big words. A lot of really great matches. So here's the question. We're in the middle of this TV negotiation, and we'll get into the you know, what's going on behind that in a little bit. But what do you think AEW needs to do with Ring of Honor? Because I feel like they are really missing out on getting the ROH product out. They are doing some great work down there. I mean, like Athena and, you know, you got Mark Briscoe and so many other guys doing outstanding, having outstanding matches, getting it done down there. But, you know, it's, it's stuck on honor club and you know, you're not getting in pay-per-view and you're not getting to see this as much as everybody probably should be. What do you do with ring of honor? Well, during the ROH media call, Tony did mention that when he's doing negotiations, he is trying to include ROH in that. So getting ROH on TV is not an impossibility. And I think that would be the first thing. Cause when you put it behind a paywall, you're, you're really just limiting the reach so much when that's the only thing. Now, if it was on some kind of service that offered AEW and ROH stuff, more people would be subscribing and watching it, of course. With Max being the potential streaming home for AEW, if that goes through, I would love to see ROH on Max as well. And I think I think it would do wonders for them just getting more eyes on the product, but the reality is the product will only succeed if they're putting effort into the weekly shows. And for a while, it's felt like the weekly shows have not been a priority. You, you have a, a big roster between ROH and AEW. And unfortunately, whenever somebody gets other than Athena, which I don't know what's going on there, but whenever somebody gets hot in ROH, they're moved to, to AEW and, you know, we end up getting a lot less cohesion in Ring of Honor. So I, I think getting them on TV or on a better streaming service is really the key. And then actually putting some effort into the ROH roster and, and making more people just dedicated ROH talents that don't jump ship between the two companies. Like Maximum Male Models, MXM Collection, whatever we're calling them now, even though they did just appear on Collision, my understanding is that they were hired more for Ring of Honor than AEW. And getting more talents like that that are just going to be in Ring of Honor, that if people like them, their only place to see them is Ring of Honor. Like That's what's going to incentivize fans. Yeah, it's a tricky spot. And I do think that the, the Max situation... Getting that in that contract, and I and I know Tony's pushing for it, and I'm sure it's going to happen. But getting Max involved in this would be not only key for Ring of Honor, but AEW, and is their next big step. They've he's got to get that done. He has to, you know, to give them that that streaming platform to get all the material out there because it, it, you know, you still can't put them in the same class as WWE in terms of everything that they do. But when you're trying to reach that level and do the things that make WWE successful, having a home like that is important and they, they don't have any place to put their material. And you know? so they, they need, they need that home. And I also think for the pay-per-views, they need that home because every, you know, you're looking at WWE and saying, Hey, you know, I've got a, a nine ninety nine monthly subscription. Why am I having to pay, you know, 50 or 60 bucks for a pay-per-view every couple of months? It doesn't make sense to people. So, and I and I think that turns people off as well. So, these TV negotiations are super important. 
And uh, are you hearing anything about that? Uh, you know, we we've seen some interesting stuff go back and forth over the past week or so. But what are your what are you hearing about what's happening with those negotiations? Um, I mean, even if I knew anything, technically I'm under the Warner Brothers umbrella, so I probably shouldn't say anything. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did forget about that. <laughs> yeah. But uh I I actually I don't know a lot, but my hope is AEW stays right where it is because I hate to say it, but now that the NBA is gone, it's going to be better for AEW because they're not going to be preempted as much. Um, and, and I want them to, to get everything on Max. And with Max doing a lot more live sports and focusing on, you know, diversifying their content or whatever buzzwords you want to use, it, it's going to be a good addition to the roster to have AEW and potentially ROH stuff on there. I think a lot of fans would be thrilled to be able to go back and watch every episode of Dynamite. Well, maybe not every episode, that would take a while, but like, you know, go back and watch some of those old matches that AEW hasn't put up on YouTube in full or you don't want to go pirate somewhere, you know? Yeah. It's, so this is going to be pretty exciting. We'll see when Tony and I'm sure Warner Brothers get this done. But it, it's common. I think it's just a matter of time at this point. And now, in terms of stuff that happened in the ring, blood and guts. And <laughs> I overall enjoyed this match. And, and I think you wrote this. This isn't everybody's cup of tea. But your overall thoughts now, we've had a few days to digest this thing a little bit. What do you think about the blood and guts, this blood and guts match and in general, the concept now that we've gone through it a few times. I mean, the concept is really just AEW war games, right? It's two rings. People come out at different intervals, big cage. It, you know, it's something we've been seeing for decades, really. AEW just guarantees there's going to be blood in there because it's sort of AEW's thing. Um. I think it's a fun stipulation. I think every Blood and Guts match we've gotten has been good or great. This past one, I thought, definitely wasn't the best one, but I still had fun with it. Were you... Did you like the ending? Because I know some people have been saying the ending kind of... It, it tailed off the way they did it. I mean, it was you know, it was exciting. You know, are we going to set this guy on fire or not? But you know, at the same time, it was kind of like you know, some people said it was a little anticlimactic. Did did you like how it finished up? It, you know, it's tough. I'm not I'm not even 100 percent sure if I've decided if I like it yet, because it was kind of a unique way to end it. I'm not going to lie. Like it, it, I've never seen somebody end a match by threatening to set somebody on fire and their partner giving in for them. But at the same time, we knew Darby wasn't going to set him on fire. It wasn't the same thing as the last spot where they were backstage. They were able to cover Jack and all this stuff that makes it safe. This was in the ring in front of everybody. We're not going to see somebody get murdered. Right. <laughs> so, but like predictability in pro wrestling are kind of, you know, it, it just, a lot of it's predictable. Like, we do predictions on Bleacher Report before pay-per-views, and a lot of us end up picking the same people, and we usually end up being right a good majority of the time. So I, I think as far as making a, a moment, it worked. But no, it was not my favorite ending, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, I I think that's a, a common sentiment on it. So that's what I was kind of thinking too. I'm like, he's not going to yeah. do it, you know. But I mean, uh, which my still... initial thought was the ending was going to be Swerve and Hangman, either Swerve pinning Hangman or Hangman pinning Swerve. So the fact that they went in a different direction, I am happy because I'm always kind of happy whenever they could surprise me a little bit, you know. Yeah, and we did get on Battle of the Belts. We actually got a title change. Or you know, at least some, a new champion, which we haven't seen in a while. How cool was that? What did you think of them putting together Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erics 
to win those six man titles because I think I think that's what those six man titles should be all about. It's here you have a a a stable that takes those or you put together a super team. And you know, getting the Von Eriks and Dustin together to me was just fantastic. I mean, I've I've been such a Von Erich fan since I was a little kid. And well, not a little, but uh, twelve or thirteen years old. So seeing that pairing win those titles to me, I think it was really special, and I, I think it was a great moment for AEW and Ring of Honor. I I had a lot of fun with that. I thought it was it was cool to see uh, Kevin out there too, um, share that moment with his sons, and you know, Dustin is one of those guys that like if you don't respect dustin Rhodes. like what are you doing yeah like, that guy that guy has not only been a great talent for a long time but the things he's overcome in his personal life and been able to somehow get back to being like as, better than he used to be like he's he's better now than he was when he was a young man like Usually when somebody is 60, they're not wrestling better than they were when they were 30. <laughs> right. So, like, the fact that he's capable of doing that is just wild to me. And seeing him hold a title at this stage in his career is awesome. That being said, the fact that we even have the ROH six-man titles, again, is weird to me. I thought the trios and the six-man titles were merged the bang bang gang was just carrying around a lot of belts because more belts looks cooler, but I didn't think we were going to have an ROH six man division anymore. And then when they stripped the titles, there wasn't a whole lot of clarity as to like, Oh, we're splitting them and we're going to make the trios and ROH six man, two different matches. So we have two different sets of champions now. Like there wasn't enough explanation of that. So when they did the ROH, I was like, wait, we're doing the ROH six man titles. What's going on here? Like it threw me off a little bit and ROH doesn't have a, like a good dedicated trios division. It's like, who do you have the premier athletes? That's it. So it's cool. But at the same time, I I don't think it's going to lead to much. Like it's, it's going to be a, they're going to have a couple of fun matches They'll eventually drop the titles to somebody, and then we'll get a Von Eric tag team run in ROH or AEW at some point. Yeah, I hear you on that. Well said, sir. And now we're getting ready for All In, too, and the card is starting to stack up. This is going to be a terrific time out at Wembley for sure. I want to talk about that main event with you first just a little bit. Swerve Strickland and Brian Danielson. Now we're seeing Jeff Jarrett even get involved in this thing a little bit, (laughs) (laughs) which, you know, I think everybody, if you said Jeff Jarrett's going to get involved in this match six months ago, you'd have been cringing, but he's actually doing great work right now that people are really enjoying. This match, I am so torn on who I want to win. I had said a while ago that I think Brian should be the one to walk out of all in with the title. Swerve just keeps changing my mind, and I don't know how to feel about this. Who do you think walks out of this match? I mean, it may not even be settled. Hangman could be getting involved in this, too. So what do you think about the main event at All In? It's going to be an amazing match. I don't think Brian should win the title because I, I need Swerve's reign to have a good lengthy run be as be a healthy reign because he has worked so hard for so long for this and seeing him finally achieve that success has been awesome. Having him only hold the title for a handful of months before dropping it would feel like a mistake after he became the hottest thing in AEW before winning it. I don't think they've done a great job during the entire title reign of making him feel as important as he should be, but it's getting better. So I I think Hangman causing some kind of thing like, I want to be the title to take it from Swerve, so I'm going to cost Brian the match. Like That makes sense to me. Hmm. That's an interesting possibility. And and Hangman's doing some of the best work I've ever seen him do, too. This is going to be... 
a, a quality main event with a lot of moving pieces. I can't wait to watch this from Wembley coming up at the end of August. Should be a lot of fun for everybody. And and now we got Camille, by the way, in this little mess with Mercedes and Dr. Britt Baker, which is going to be a lot of fun. And, boy, did Camille make an impression on everybody right away. Holy cow. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, I don't know a ton about Camille. I've seen some of her work. She's very impressive. I think giving Mercedes a heater is a great call because you know she's not going to be wrestling every week. That's just not the deal she signed. So having somebody else, like what Jade used to do with the baddies, you know, like they go out there, they have a match or two with the rival, and then Mercedes faces them. So I think it's a good combination, and Camille is a believable badass. So she's going to she's gonna help Mercedes, I think, and Mercedes is going to help her in return by, you know, rubbing a little of that star power on her. Yeah, very interesting stuff coming out of this week's shows. So we're going to, we do have to get a break in here real quick. I'm kind of running a little bit behind here, doc, but we will come back, wrap up a little bit on all in and you know, talk a little bit more about what's happening in the world of pro wrestling on a couple of the topics. When we return, like, you know, what's up with Jake Cargill and Omas and you know, what's happening with Bleach Report too. That's kind of important. So stick around everybody. We'll be right back on the Mark Hoke show with uh, Chris Dockmuller from Bleacher Report right after this. One oh one five FM K Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right, let's wrap this up here on the Mark Oak Show on K Don 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas Odyssey app. And, of course, we are streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and X. Thanks for being with us. Of course, we have Bleacher Reports. Chris Dockmuller joining us. Of course, make sure you check out his work. Just, you know, do what I do. Go to, you know, if you're looking for a result for a show, just, you know, type it in and, you know, put in Bleacher Report and bam, there it is. That's how it works. It's great stuff. Of course, I'm sure Doc just says go to bleacherreport.com and get your info, but it's a the just amazing work, love it to death. So very happy to have Doc on the show. Uh Doc, rest of this uh all in card so far. Tony Storm and Mariah May, this one's shaping up to be wild. MJF and Osprey and Jack Perry and Darby Allen. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad at all. No, it's it's a good lineup building, and man, Tony and Mariah, oh. I am I am just so excited for that one. Yeah, and if you didn't see it, uh, Mariah May came out for her match, and not only had her Owen Hart belt, but she had the shoe that she busted Tony Storm open with. Nice touch, nice touch on that. So yeah, those two are gonna have a wild one. I can't, I cannot wait for that one. To, to take place. That'll be for the AEW uh, Women's World Championship. And of course, uh, MJF and Osprey. You know, what, what did you think about that, uh, the one hour match, by the way? I didn't, you know, forgot to ask you about that. It was great. I mean, they, they, they did an amazing job. I don't know why some people were complaining about it. Like, what are we doing here, people? <laughs> you complain about AEW pay-per-views being too long, but then you complain when they put a pay-per-view quality match on TV too. Like, can we just have fun? Yeah. Why, why is that? I don't, I don't understand the hate for AEW. I just, I never get that. We, you know, we've, we've spoken about it a few times on the show here that it, it just is. AEW has helped raise the industry up and whether you like it or not is a different story, but, you know, I don't get why there's just such so much venom for AEW sometimes. I think there's a lot of different factors for different people. Like if you ask a hundred people who hate AEW why they hate AEW, you're gonna get different responses. You know, you you've got the 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 coronet contingent, you know, all those people who just blindly hate it without watching it, or they or they watch all of it just so they can pretend to hate it. 
Uh, then you have the WWE loyalists who look at this as like the Monday Night Wars, even though none of the shows are really competing directly. <laughs> you know, and then you've got people who simply just don't like the way AEW does things, and that's fair. You know, you don't, nobody, not everybody has to like everything. I personally like all of it. Like, I like AEW, I like WWE, I think TNA is doing some great stuff right now, ROH is good new japan has some fun stuff going on cmll and aew's relationship has kind of made a lot more people interested in cmll and put some eyes on some incredible talents like man the beast mortos has really had a couple of great matches here in the past week that match with commander was just incredible i i I tell everybody to go watch that that was great and then the match he had last night was great too and then you got like the new guy hologram coming in. He's great. So there's just, there's so much to like in pro wrestling right now. The fact that people have time to hate on anything is crazy to me. Like, I don't know. It's just weird. I agree. Just enjoy it for God's sake. Have fun. I mean, I don't want to go back to the days where it was just WWE and everything else. And they were on coast mode. You know, we, this is, this is enjoyable. I like it. I'm excited. It's it's fun to turn on the TV and actually get to watch good pro wrestling no matter where you are and you know go to the indie cards too. It's you know cuz they're even having to push themselves because these guys know there's chances now. So, you know, come on. Just relax everybody. Relax. But man, there there has been so much great indie wrestling in recent years like the business as a whole hasn't been this healthy in decades if ever. And I know people might point to like, oh, the ratings are this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's not relevant anymore. There's so many ways to consume content that worrying about the Nielsen ratings is something you should only do if you're a TV executive or you work at AEW. I'm tired of the ratings conversations. It doesn't matter. Everybody needs to shut up about it. (laughs) Well, you know, it is interesting you say that because they're, as you mentioned, there's so many other different ways to watch now. And I mean, I'm this close to getting rid of my cable cause I'm tired of you know paying a ridiculous amount of money for it. And, and that stuff, even if I was, you know, had a, you know, had a Nielsen box or something like that, I wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, I wouldn't be registering, but it's those ratings numbers. It's amazing that everybody gripes about AEW, but then there's still one of the top shows every week for Dynamite every week. So I mean, TV ratings are down across the entire industry. Right. Like, you know, cable has been getting cut for a lot of people, YouTube TV and Hulu, all that. Like, I don't know how all that is factored into Nielsen ratings, but I doubt that they're taking that into account very much. But there are people who literally will only watch wrestling highlights on Twitter and YouTube and stuff like that. And that's perfectly fine. Like, they like consuming that content that way. So, yeah, like, I don't know why some fans feel like, oh, WWE winning the ratings war means I'm winning somehow. Like, no, shut up and just watch the show. (laughs) Ratings, (laughs) like, I know that maybe the message board weirdos were doing it back in the day, but... I don't remember anybody caring about ratings for WCW and WWE. We were caring about the fact that both companies were throwing everything at the wall to try and put on an exciting product. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting little conflict there for everybody that's doing reasons. Trust me, I deal with that all the time too. So I know all about how the Nielsen ratings work and they, they, it's a little bit of a flawed system too. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. But you know, what do you guys see at Bleacher Report? I mean, you know, I know you've been there for a while. What's it been like for your reach? Have you been seeing a, a, a major uptick the last year or two or what, what's going on over there? I mean, we're, we're a pretty big sports site, so it fluctuates just like it does with anything. But, I do know that my uh, the two things I did for night one and night two of WrestleMania, it set some kind of record for Bleacher Report. I don't remember if it was like page views or whatever it was, but like we're we're you know we're getting great 
traffic off of pro wrestling and we're one of the few like kind of safe sections on the website. Like we don't have an off season, so we don't have a slow period. And we have a team of writers that's been consistent for years. Like you look at a lot of websites and you'll notice turnover. You'll like, Oh, who's this new writer that I've never heard of? And where did this guy go? we've had the same lineup of people for several years and we've only added like the last time we added somebody was Phil Lindsay. And that was like four or five years ago. (laughs) So I I like that because people who've been reading us for years know that they're going to get that consistency with us. And I think that that has helped us maintain our readership. So where can everybody find you? Cause we're just about out of time here. So give them the rundown on where they can uh, catch your work and uh, find you on social media. Well, all my work is on Bleacher Report. Occasionally I'll pop up on podcasts and stuff, but I I don't have my own because I'm lazy. And then (laughs) you can find me on Twitter at BR. That's the absolute truth, man. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You can find me on Twitter at BR underscore doctor where I'm, you know, half the time I'm tweeting about wrestling and half the time I'm posting like food pictures to piss people off. Nice. Well, that's okay, too. I like food pictures. <laughs> oh, man. Doc, hey, I want to thank you for coming on the show again. It is always a pleasure to have you on. And, you know, keep up the great work over at Bleacher Report. We certainly appreciate it. And I will speak to you again soon, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Yep, you got it. And that's going to do it for us here on the Mark Hoke Show. We will see you next week and our anniversary show third year and of course wrapping up SummerSlam. oh man it's going to be an unbelievable night saturday brace yourselves for that and we'll have all the news for you coming out of there on sunday thanks for your everybody follow us on twitter at mark hoke show facebook the mark hoke show subscribe to us on youtube that's what we need at the mark hoke show we'll see you next week on kate on the odyssey app have a great day las vegas Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show, and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.